In this video, we're going to talk about the Native American Dreamcatcher and what algebraic and geometric patterns we see within the Dreamcatcher. We're going to be, this is based on the Desmos activity that you'll be working through. In the first slide, we'll be writing some things you notice and wonder about the designs on this page. We start in the upper left corner from with a six-pointed Dreamcatcher, which will be later constructed using Desmos geometry software to the bottom right, which is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven point dream catcher. On slide two, you're actually to construct the dream catcher. So to take note, you can make it bigger or smaller by grabbing the highlighted point. Grab, drag, pulling it outwards will make it bigger while pushing it inwards will make it smaller. So to construct the dream catcher, you can move and grab the outward circle and just move it around as you see fit and hit construct. And then you want to select segment. We'll do if a little bit of it together and then I'll then you can have time to work on it on your own. So just click on the point and drag it towards the next point, working your way inwards, 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 and one more time, and then work on the other side, inwards, inwards, and one last time. So you should have what looks like a series of a triangle and, a, and two quadrilaterals, and you're gonna work your way around the rest of the dream catcher using that same skill. After you're done, um, after you complete your dream catcher, describe what you think the construction involves. In other words, what do you notice as you um, move inwards? What are these points right here? On the next slide, you want to add a picture of your dream catcher and describe how you think the weaving of the actual dream catcher relates to the one you just wove using geometry software. On this slide, you're going to construct a dream catcher, a six point dream catcher to be exact. To do that, what you want to do is you want to hit transform and you want to define a transformation so I started it for you and you click rotation the first step is choose your center rotation like so select it and then you have to think 360 because there's 360 degrees in the circle divide it by six will be 60 and you click on the outermost point and just hit apply it should make its way around six times and do the same trick for the other concentric circles. And again, one more time, and one more time. The next step is to start making the web. So we'll use a segment tool and we'll connect them. Two, three, five, and do the same trick in this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, one, two, oops. You don't drag it far enough, it doesn't quite make it to the point. Two, three, four, five, and one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, except for the outermost circle, we're going to highlight all the circles. 
hide it, hide it, hide it, and one last time, hide it. Now to get the Dreamcatcher look, what we need to do is we need to find the midpoint. And we're going to do that on every other level. Two, three, four, five, six, and then skip one, two, three, four, five, six. Skip this one. Then you want the midpoints here. Two, three, four, five, six. It might be useful to hide some points. So the levels where the spots where you made the midpoints just hide the vertices is high by just clicking and hit click and hide click hit hide click hit hide click hit hide and then to start constructing your dream catcher what you want to do is you're going to Take the segment tool, connect from here to here, and here to here. Eventually, you're going to hide all these hexagons, but for now, we don't need to. Here to here, here to here, and let's hide this level. We don't want to hide the midpoint. We want to hide the vertices. Hide the vertices. Hide the vertices. And then one last time, hide the vertices. And I'm going to do a few more steps and then give you time to work through this so you can see how it's, it's set up. And then just like before, you can see the shape starting to come in. Connect. Connect. Connect, connect, and then one last connection. You can see that same shape that we have before. Now to make our dream catcher official, we just want to hide all these segments now. So that way all we have is the points. Hide them. Hide it and then work, keep working your way towards the center and just hide. The last level you don't want to hide. Keep hiding them. Hide it. Hide it. Hide it. Hide it. Hide it and hide it one more time around the hexagon. Hide it. Hide it and hide it. And then as you work your way towards the center, you should see that dream catcher look. On the next slide, what you're going to do is you're going to fill in this table. So if there's six concentric circles, how many loops or knots would you have? So that's just like we had on this last slide. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll do the six together. Six. And then six times two would be 12. And six times three would be 18. 24. 6 times 5 would be 30. 
6 times 6 would be 36. 6 times 7 would be 42. And then, it, depending on how many concentric circles you have, the last will always be 6C. And you would do that same thing for the rest of them. And write a formula for the number of loops with a 12 pointed Dreamcatcher with C levels. But you've kind of already done that with the table, but work your way through the table and see if you've noticed any patterns. On slide six, by analyzing the diagram and the construction you made in slide three, determine what types of symmetries are displayed in the 12 pointed dream catcher. So just to refresh, there's translational symmetries, which basically means you move one point to another point. Rotational, which means you're rotating around a circle like we're seeing here. And there's also reflectional, meaning that if you drew a line of reflection, you would you could see a point being translated equal distance from that line of reflection. Using the outer circle, determine how many of each of the symmetries there are that you best that you describe these parts. You want to, once you determine what types of symmetries there are, in other words, how many of each are there? And then write an equation for the number of symmetries for an endpoint at Dreamcatcher where n is a whole number. On slide 7, the loop points of the web of the 12 pointed Dreamcatcher connect to form two types of quadrilaterals as shown in the figure. Make a conjecture to determine what types of quadrilaterals. So we see. A, C, D, E, and C, D, F, G. What types of quadrilaterals are there? So you might want to look up the different types of quadrilaterals and their properties. And if you want to double check your measurements, you can use either the Dreamcatcher on page 12, and there's a tool that you can use. You can just Hit construct, and there should be a way to measure it. Let's see. No, I don't see a way to measure it. Let's see about this one. There we go. So on slide four, you can measure some of these things. And just that should give you an idea of what type of quadrilateral you're seeing once you look at the definitions and properties of the different types of quadrilaterals. And then on the last slide, just type in what other types of properties or mathematics you notice hitting with inside within the dream catcher as you work your way through the activities that I provided for you. Please in the below add any comments and I hope you enjoy working your way through these activities.